Hello and welcome to my second video in using Blender 2.6. Today we're going to be talking about Blender's interface as well as how to customize it and we'll be setting up a few other references for Blender and using a laptop as well. Uh, so to start off, Blender when you first load it is actually divided into six windows. Uh, windows are parts of the user interface that can be changed and divided and subdivided and even taken away if we wanted to. So Blender is very user customizable. The six windows are the information window, which is this top bar up top, which contains our file, add, render, help, and other um, windows and options. Below that is the 3D view window, which is our viewport into our 3D world. Below that is our timeline, and on the side is the outliner window, which outlines all of the objects in our scene. And below that is the properties window, which is where we do a lot of the work in 3D. Um, now all of these windows are resizable, so I can grab them and I can change their size. I can make one smaller, one bigger, and that's handy. But I can also take any of these windows and change them into any other window kind, and I can subdivide any of these windows. So right now I have a really large 3D window or 3D viewport in the middle of my screen. And at the side of it, which is actually part of that same window, is this tool shelf panel. And if I press T, if my mouse is inside the 3D view window, I press T and that window goes away, or that panel goes away. I can press T and make it come back, but I'll make it disappear for now. I want to subdivide this window, because sometimes in 3D programs you see uh, the 3D viewport divided into four, and you see the top view, and the side view, and the front view, and then a perspective view all in one. And we can recreate that in Blender by dragging this little shaded area in the top corner of any of the windows, and dragging it either left or right, or up and down. And if we drag left or right, we'll actually be dividing that window into two separate windows, uh, divided vertically. If I grab that same uh, cross-hatched area and I drag it down, it'll divide the area so there's a horizontal divider. Now we have three. I'm going to make one more. I'm going to make this into two distinct ones by grabbing. And now we have th four distinct 3D viewports, which can all be controlled separately. So in this top corner, I'm going to press, or I'm going to change it to, excuse me, uh, the front view. And I'm going to go view orthographic. I'm going to change this one to left and also make it orthographic. And change this one to top and also make it orthographic. And this one's OK. This one will be my perspective, uh, my user perspective view. So that's how I can change any of the windows to make them more or subdivide them. Now what happens if I want to rearrange them even more or start merging some of my windows together? Let's say I really make a mess of my screen and I make way too many subdivisions and I want to clean up my screen a little bit. Well I can do that and it's just about as easy. If I right click between any two windows that form a rectangle, in other words these two windows form an exact rectangle and they share one exclusive side with only each other. I can right click on the, on the divider between them and say join area. And what that will do is allow me to merge one window into the other uh, and I can choose which one. And I'm just going to click and they are now one window. Same thing with these windows, although I have to be more careful. It won't let me merge two windows that don't share an exclusive common side. Uh, so I have to start with these two small ones because they're the two smallest ones. And I can either right click in between them and say join areas or I can grab that little shaded area again and drag from one into the other and it gives me that same arrow if you can see it there. Now I can drag it either way and I'm going to drag it that way and that's okay. And I'm going to right click this time and say join areas and then go down. I'll drag this one and I'm going to drag this one up. So now I have two 3D view windows. I can change any of these window types. So if I want to make this one um, into an outliner window, I can do that. This is our outliner window out here. It displays all the objects in my scene, a camera, a cube, and a lamp. I can just click on this little button and change this window type. From right now, it's a 3D view window. I can change it to another timeline, a graph editor, a dope sheet, any kind of the window types that we have. Um, but I'm going to make it into a outliner. So now I have two outliners. I'm going to make that a bit narrower. And I might make this into a 3D view window and make the view from my camera. So if I go to view 
and I select camera, it'll actually view that window or view the 3D scene from this camera. If I move this camera, it'll move the viewport in there as well. Now, so, you, so as you can see, Blender is very customizable. Uh, and by default, I'm just going to go up to File and Load Factory Settings. By default, we get these six windows. But it also allows us to save these window layouts as we make them. And it comes with a few defaults as well. The default layout is called Default. But if I click it right next to the word default, it gives me a menu and I can choose from different window layouts. So there's a layout for animation, which is almost the same, although it has a dope sheet window and a graph editor window. Don't worry if you don't know, what, don't know what those are. A timeline, a properties window, an outliner, and a 3D view window again from the camera. There's also a layout for video editing and a layout for UV editing, which is making and painting textures on objects. But I like to stick with default for the most part and make my own. If I click, click on this little plus sign right next to the word default, I make a copy of the default. It's called default 01. And I'm going to call this one no, oops, no timeline and press enter. Now, no timeline is my new uh, window layout. And by its name, you can tell that I'm going to have no timeline in it. So I'm going to get rid of my timeline by dragging the timeline little shaded area up. And then I'm not letting go until I point it downwards and let go. And that gets rid of my 3D view window. I want to save this Blender setup. So I'm going to go to File, Save User Settings, or press Control U. And that'll save Blender exactly as it is for the next time I launch it. Be careful though, if you play with Save User Settings, make sure that you don't give your, your viewport a really strange angle. And then press Control U or go to Save User Settings, because then the next time you launch Blender, you'll have that same weird view again. So I'm going to press 1, oops, or I'm going to go to, excuse me, I'm going to go to view, and actually that illustrates what I'm going to be doing next. Uh, front and view orthographic, oops, say view orthographic, and I'll zoom in a little bit and press file, save user settings, and close and reopen Blender. So again, I have my timeline or my no timeline uh, default layout, and now I'm on the front view. A few more things to set up. As you can tell, I'm used to having a keyboard on my uh, computer that has a number pad. And this number pad can be really helpful if you want to be able to switch between your views really quickly. If you press 1 on the numpad, it goes straight to your front view. If you press 3, it goes straight to your right or side view. Press 7 for top. And you can press 5 to toggle between perspective and orthographic. Um, but by default, or on most laptops, there isn't a numpad, and that's unfortunate. But you can actually set Blender up to work with the number row to act the same as a number pad uh, for changing your, your views with keyboard shortcuts. So if I go to File and User Preferences, this is where all of Blender's kind of system preferences are. I'm going to go to Input and click on Emulate Numpad, and this makes Blender's uh, Blender work with your uh, number row for all the view keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to press save as default and this does the same as going to file save user settings. And now if I press 1 on my laptop number row it goes to the front view which it already was. I can toggle between orthographic and perspective which it is now so that's perspective and that's orthographic. I'm going to press 3 exactly for the right view, 7 for the top view, and if I press any of the numbers in between, like 2, it will rotate my view in small increments. I'm not sure how many degrees that is, but you can press around with the, or play around with the 2, 4, 5, or 5 is orthographic, 6, 7 uh, keys on your number row. Alright, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in my next video.